And coming up around the corner, we're coming up on the lemon squeeze. This is the tightest portion of our cave tour. At its narrowest point, it's about 17 inches across, but do not worry, we have never had anyone ever get stuck in our lemon squeeze. But just in case, we do have an emergency procedure. Whoever's in front will pull, whoever's in the back will push. If that doesn't work, we have another tour coming along in about 15 minutes. They'll get a running head start. <laughs> Just checked out the Mark Twain Cave. This place is really awesome. We're gonna just add this to the Hannibal, Missouri video, but it was so cool, so many fun things. We learned so many facts and interesting tidbits, especially as it relates to the books. We're gonna make this its own video. Okay, so hi, my name is Michael. I'm going to be your all's tour guide today, and with that video, we are good to head out. Okay. So the video briefly mentioned the 260 passages in our cave. This is a map of our entire cave system. It has been completely explored. So you can see this is the, these are every, all the passages. This is everything that exists in the cave. And with that, that red line is going to be our tour route. Down here at number one is where we'll be starting, and we'll be making a big circle back to that number 17 back at the bottom. There are four entrances into our cave. Only one natural entrance is our discovery entrance, which you can see up the hill, that orange sign. There is where Jack Sims discovered our cave in the winter of 1819 to 1820 when he was out hunting with his dog. A cougar ran into that hole, so his dog followed after it. And thinking it was a cougar's den, John came back, or Jack came back the next day with his brother and the neighbor. He realized that wasn't a cougar's den, but was in fact the only natural entrance into our cave. Other than that, we have three other man-made entrances. First off, our 1890 entrance blasted through in 1890. It was the largest entrance into our cave, so that's what we use today to help people get in. We also have our John East entrance, which is uh, visible from the parking lot near the bathrooms. And you can see it was dug through by uh, John East, who was our first tour guide. Our last entrance you can kind of see from here, but it's a part of our building. It's our 1979 inclement weather entrance. You can kind of see the end of the building right there. Oh. And again, that was made 1979 as a way to get in in the event of rain. Again, this is a maze cave. There are a lot of very complex, complex passages, so please just keep with the group. Don't wander off. Close this gate behind us. Thank you very much. Now, what's the first thing you all notice as you went? What do you feel? What do you feel? Uh, it, get, it drops to 52 degrees. Exactly. You already know what you're talking about. It's 52 degrees Fahrenheit in our cave at all times. Very good. It's never going to change because of this rock around us. This is called Louisiana limestone. It acts as an insulator, keeping the cave this constant 52 degrees Fahrenheit all year round. Now with this, you'll notice a lot of obstructions and obtrusions on the wall. Most notably, you'll see a lot of signatures, as well as a lot of candle soot and smoke. This is from a lot of early explorers using candles and marking their way as they came in. However, the top of the limestone here has been sandblasted to give you an idea of what the cave would look like were it to be in a much more natural state. The only thing obstructing the cream color of the limestone being a little bit of moss we get from our lights. <laughs> as well as these crystal-like structures. Does anyone have a guess as to what these might be? Uh, calcium? Calcium, you're very close. Uh, something like that. You're very close. These are called calcite nodules. The very similar names. Now, calcite looks like a crystal, but it is technically a mineral. It is the purest form of limestone, uh, formed when the limestone gets put under a lot of pressure. And so you find that in a lot of places around here, especially by rivers. And so it's a very common mineral. Now, a lot of early explorers thought that these were diamonds. So you can see, naturally, they're rusted over, but some were chipped off the wall, and they were taken to the local jeweler, only for these explorers to find out, no, they hadn't struck rich. These weren't diamonds. These were just calcite nodules. Now, to put this in perspective, on most hardness scale, diamonds are a 10. That is the hardest any rock can be, meaning it's very hard to break, nearly impossible to scratch. But calcite, on the other hand, is I believe about a three, and your fingernails are about a two and a half. So you can almost scratch calcite, they're about as hard as your fingernails, and unfortunately they're worth about just as much. <laughs> this is the Jesse James hideout. We can't actually prove that Jesse James was in this exact spot, but we do know he was in our cave because he had left some evidence. He had signed his name dating at September 22nd, 1879. 
This was just about two weeks before he led a train robbery down in Independence, Missouri, I believe on October 16th. Now, why Jesse James was in our cave, we don't really know. There's quite a few rumors spanning from that he was in town for a circus, or that he was just passing by on his way to Independence. We really don't know why, but we are one of only three show caves in Missouri that can prove he was in our cave. Now, unfortunately, we will not be able to visit our Jesse James signature today due to time restraints and the fact that it's down a very narrow and crooked passage. Now, our most recent discovery in our cave, I believe uh, it was July 19th, 2019, was we had oh, yes. a signature of a very famous person. I don't know if you can guess who. This was discovered by Linda Colbert two years ago. I know who it is. <laughs> yeah. Who? Who's it? It is uh, Mark Twain. Exactly. So it says Clemens, but Mark Twain was his pen name. His original name was Samuel Langhorn Clemens. This is the only verified signature of Mark Twain in our cave, or even signature that we know of. Considering that it took us 150 years to find this signature, as he would have been about 17 years old at the time of writing it, we can assume that there are very likely more Clemens. signatures that we'd like to find that we still don't know about. Post office. Exactly. Passing the post office here. Yes. A lot of kids use this because it's got this little child-sized door, as well as this window, the little seat inside. Now this is where kids would come into the cave to play, they'd place a slate right there in the window. They would sign their names as they came in and scratch it off as they left. <laughs> At the end of the day, the sheriff would come in, he'd make sure every child had scratched off their name, and if they hadn't, he would search the cave for the child. If he couldn't find them, he'd bring a search party. Now about 9 times out of 10 when this happened, the kid was fine, they were just at home eating dinner and they just forgot to scratch their name off the slate. We're passing the signature. That's C.D. Tucker, Clive Tucker, he signed his name in the cave over 250 times. Why, we have absolutely no idea, but you can imagine when he was finished, he must have been a little bit tuckered out. Ah, there it is. We also have these three signatures oh, up here. These three guys were all around in 1877. They would have been around through the American Civil War. <laughs> here we're also passing another landmark. This is called our guiding hand. You can imagine it as a hand with one finger pointing the direction we need to go to get out of the cave. Now, I'm not very superstitious, and you all did pay for the full tour, so we're heading the opposite direction. <laughs> but this is our wishing well. Do feel free to throw down whatever you'd like. Coins, bills, Arby's gift cards. <laughs> now, all the money thrown down here does go to a good cause, that Tom and Becky program I talked about. All this money goes towards a scholarship fund, so when I'm a senior, I get to write a paper talking about why I believe I deserve money in the form of a scholarship. And all the money from that scholarship comes from all the money thrown down into this well. Thank you all for hopefully investing in my future. <laughs> and this is the parlor room. This is the only portion of the tour where you are allowed to climb up on the rocks. Go. Cool. Do so. Climb, kiddos. <laughs> do what you want. <laughs> now, of course, we have to have names for everything, so I will start. First off, you all are on our bookshelves right now. Beneath it, we have our overextended love seat. On this side, we have our overstuffed sofa and the footrest. Now, in the darkness, Tom and Becky made their way through the cave to here. They made it to the parlor and they sat down on the love seat. Oh. <laughs> and Becky began to cry. And Tom, caring so much for Becky, was trying to work up the nerve to tell her those three little words. So he took a deep breath, he leaned in close to Becky's ear, and he said, Becky, we are lost. <laughs> those were not the three words that Becky wanted to hear, and she began to cry even harder. Tom remembered that he had a piece of cake that he had put in his pocket at the picnic. And he took out the cake and he split it with Becky and told her that it was going to be their wedding cake. Oh. Well, that made her feel a little bit better. While he was in his pocket, he found some kite string. So he tied one end of the kite string to his finger, to Becky's finger, and went down this way to look for an exit. He got all the way down there where it starts to get dark and he found a great drop-off. Well, with being total darkness, he wasn't dare going to test how deep that drop-off was, and so he was about to head back in this direction when he saw a torchlight. 
He was very excited, thinking that this was a search party coming to look for them. So he was just about to yell out when who came around the corner but Injun Joe. Uh -huh. Now, if you know the story, just a few days earlier, Tom had testified against Injun Joe in a murder trial for killing Doc Robinson. And Injun Joe had escaped by jumping out of a second story window, but not before declaring that he was going to get revenge on Tom Sawyer. Well, that's not who Tom wanted to see coming around the corner. And so he quickly came this way, thinking that bats were better than murderers. And so he moved down this way. Well, Joe heard the commotion of people moving and thought it was a search party looking for him. So he ran off in that direction. And that's the way we're going to go right now. Oh, yeah. Right. Now, feel free to play our grand piano as you go by. But just know, she only plays one kind of music. Can you guess? Rock. Nice. Now, this is the only paid advertisement in the cave. Huh. It says, Star Brand Shoes Are Better. And it was actually chiseled in with sculpture tools to the cave's surface. Star Brand Shoes at the time was one of the most popular brands of shoes. And for a little bit of interesting history, if you've ever made it to the City Museum in St. Louis, that is the building where Star Brand Shoes were made, and it's still painted on the side of the building. That is awesome. We were there yesterday. Oh, awesome. All right, guys. So we're now at that drop-off that I talked about in the story. Early visitors to the cave had to climb down a rope ladder here at this drop-off. And early in the tours, the cave owners decided this was not the safest way for people to visit the cave. And so they took cave or cave clay from either side and they filled it in and made this ramp. So this is a man-made ramp because this was a drop-off. Now I will tell you, it is kind of slippery because it is the cave clay. We have these safety rails here. Please feel free to grab them. And if you like a pun, you can call them stalag pipes. <laughs> <laughs> now this formation is a natural formation in caves. It's called a floating bridge. And it's created by a triangular crack or lifeline. The water comes in in a vortex and spins around, causing the wear around the stone to create this floating bridge. And so that is a natural formation of the cave. <laughs> so here on your left, oh. beware of this drop-off. We call it the bad kid drop-off. <laughs> and parents are allowed to make donations. <laughs> Ooh. We do say that kids that go down there come back a few years later as tour guides. <laughs> <laughs> now we are coming to five points. It is called oh. five points because it's where five passages of the cave all converge in one section. The first passage is the one we've just come down. And the one that you're coming to right there is actually a famous passage. When Norman Rockwell illustrated the re-release of the adventures of Tom Sawyer. He did all of the illustrations for that and he wanted them to be accurate. So Norman Rockwell actually came to Hannibal. He stood in that passageway and he sketched two Hannibal children for the Tom and Becky of that famous painting. So that is where that painting is from. So now this is a living formation in our cave. We call it the Cascades because it looks like a beautiful waterfall. And you can see the water still moving down it. When it's been really wet and rainy, you can really see it moving. And so there are soda straws at the top, and this is flow stone moving down. It ends in the formation called a travertine dam. So that is what the water gets trapped in at the bottom. 
So this is an example of flowstone. So Aladdin's palace is the only area in the cave that Mark Twain himself named in his book. Mark Twain was a world traveler. His very first book was called Innocence Abroad, and it was about his world travel. And he had traveled to India, and he remembered this section of the cave. With its great domes and its reflecting pool, it reminded him of the Taj Mahal. And so when he wrote the book, he called this section Aladdin's Palace. Now the water that's dripping down is 99.8% pure. Wow. So you could just drink it straight from the rock. Now we say that the other 0.2% is frog. <laughs> because there are often leopard frogs in here. And how they come in and how they go out, I don't know. Because I've never once seen a frog hopping through. But I find that fascinating. <laughs> That's cool. Now up here is my very favorite formation in the cave. We are in a shallower part of the cave. And the top of this formation is actually a tree root from a great cottonwood tree on the top of the hill. Because though we're in a cave, most of our route doesn't actually take us below ground, but into the great hill behind us. So when you go out to the cave, when you go out, if you guys look up, you'll see this giant hill. This is the hill that contains the cave. There are areas that go down below ground, but we're very close to the surface, and that is a tree root. And the flowstone, you can see it dripping right now, has formed around that tree root. So imagine how old this tree must be to have this much flowstone having grown around it. And so it is a beautiful formation. Here's another travertine dam. This section is called the Rainbow Grotto. And it's called that not because of the colorful lights, but because it has five different minerals all in one place. Huh. Now you can see daylight right there. Watch your step. Oh. And that is the John East entrance, but we'll see a better view of it in just a minute. Ooh. So we call this area Devil's Slide. The kids would often fill buckets of water up and come and slide down the Devil's Slide. We call it Devil's Slide because that's what they would see in their mother's eyes when they came home all full of clay. <laughs> hey. All right, guys, we made it back to our discovery entrance. So this is where we saw that dog and the cougar, and that's where they would have originally found the entrance. Now, this is where we end the story of Injun Joe. Now, Tom and Becky eventually made their way out of the cave. It took them three days, and they were sent to bed to rest. Now, they were sent to bed to rest for two weeks, but Tom couldn't make it that long, and after only a week, he was out and about in town. Now, while he was out, he saw Judge Thatcher, and Judge Thatcher said to him, Tom, you ready to go back in the cave? And Tom didn't understand sarcasm, and said, yeah, I'll go get my candle. <laughs> well, Judge Thatcher let him know that they had boarded up the entrance to the cave, so no children ever got lost again. And that is when Tom remembered that they weren't alone in the cave. He told Judge Thatcher that he had seen Injun Joe, and the judge got a posse together, and they came to look for Joe. They didn't have to look far. Joe had also found the entrance, the exit to the cave, but it was already boarded up. They found his body lying right there because he had died of starvation. Now, we know that Mark Twain's stories are fiction, but he based the characters on real people. Mark Twain himself was the inspiration for Tom Sawyer. Becky Thatcher was his childhood sweetheart, Laura Hawkins. And Injun Joe was a real man in town named Joe Douglas. Now, Joe Douglas was a very kind man who was well-liked in the community. So when Mark Twain came, 
back to Hannibal for the last time, Joe asked him, Sam, why would you make me the villain of your story? And Mark Twain laughed and said, Joe, it's because you're the ugliest man I ever knew. <laughs> and unfortunately, Joe did have kind of a bad appearance. At a young age, he'd been scalped by Native Americans. Later, he developed smallpox and was badly scarred. And he also wore a red horsehair wig to try to hide the scalping. So he did scare some of the local children. But he was a kind man, and he told Mark Twain, just like Injun Joe, I'm going to get my revenge. I'm going to outlive you. Well, Mark Twain died in 1910 as Haley's Comet came over the sky. He was 70 years old. Joe lived to be 102. Oh, wow. And he didn't even die of natural causes. He died of food poisoning from eating a bad batch of his favorite food, which was pickled pig's feet. Mm. Oh. I don't know that there's a good batch. <laughs> This section of the cave is really slippery. Feel free to use the walls and be careful. Oh, wow. Yeah, I feel the walls a little wet, too. Yes. So cool. Yeah. For real. I love it. So cool. Uh, there we go. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, probably so. What's this part of the cave called? The ancient walls. Yeah, the exit, right? That's cool. some minor snafus, so you must have rubbed the alligator the right way, because we made our way out. Okay, this is the picture of the signature of Jesse James, and that is the uh, Norman Rockwell painting. I really hope you enjoyed your tour with us. It was really fun to tour with you guys, and I hope that you enjoy your time in Hannibal. If you enjoyed your tour, my name is Jessica, and if you didn't, Lydia. <laughs> and this will lead us right back into the gift shop, guys. Yes. Just a giant loop. Just like Disney. <laughs> thank you. The perfect way to end, right, is the gift shop. Yes, thank you. <laughs> You're all right, guys. Have fun. Thanks again for watching. Please visit www.davidhtroyer.com. Please check out my books at amazon.com slash author slash David H. Troyer, instagram.com slash David H. Troyer, patreon.com slash David H. Troyer, at David H. Troyer on Twitter. Please check out the Mark Twain Cave Complex whenever you get a chance. Have a great day, and we hope to see you in our travels. Now, of course, we have to have names for everything, so I will start. First off, you all are on our bookshelves right now. Beneath it, we have our overextended love seat. On this side, we have our overstuffed sofa and the footrest. Now, you may remember this joke. Yeah. But I remember this one. All right, listen. 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 Go ahead. So, we also do have the grand piano that's pointing out right now. Can I tell them to you? If you'd like, if you'd like to. Go ahead. So, the only... You can play it, but the only uh, music that plays is rock. There it is. <laughs> exactly. Someone broke our piano. Only plays hard rock. Hard <laughs> rock. <laughs> <laughs>